Okay, so here we have the profile that we are loading uh, using this, this uh, URL based on this ID, and that's coming from the uh, server, right? We found it, here's the object, and then we use it to populate, the controller uses it to populate the template, okay? Uh, but the update is not, is, is, uh, um, is not actually working, even though this looks like it did work. Uh, if we refresh, notice that a, a new query goes out to the server and it, it retrieves the object instance from the server, right? So we're not making the updates on the server. So uh, let's fix that, right? So this, uh, this uh, OK uh, check mark over here is uh, being handled on the controller uh, in the profile, right? Using this function right here, update user, uh, new user, right? Uh, so, so it's being implemented right here by this update user, and in the client, in the service client, there it is, this update right here, uh, which is trying to update it right here in the in the local array in this in this array over here. But instead, we want to change that so that it changes it on the server instead. All right. So let's comment that out. Right. And instead, we're going to use HTTP. Uh, and uh, but instead of using get. Right now we're going to use put. Right, put. Uh, uh, remember, we're going to use get for re for reading. We're going to use post for creating new things, puts for editing things that already exist, and delete for removing things that already exist. That's a convention, right? Uh, that's a very common convention in the industry. Uh, um, uh, RESTful APIs follow this convention, right? So when they when they when whenever uh, you see an API and says, "Oh, we are RESTful APIs," right? Is because they're follow this is part of that convention, right? That we use posts for creating, puts for uh, for updating, uh, gets for readings, and deletes for removing. Okay. Um, you could do everything just with a get, right? You, it is possible to just do everything with a get. If you use a Flickr API, for instance, they do everything with a get, right? They say that they're a RESTful API, but they're not really. A uh, they they don't follow. Uh, the convention of you know what it's meant really by a RESTful API. Uh, it's only they only say that because it's uh, you know it's a nice marketing for marketing. Uh, so anyway, I said oh did I just record that? <laughs> uh, anyway, so uh, HTTP put uh, we want to uh, send send data no the new the new user uh, object to the same URL we had earlier so uh, API user notice that. All these URLs are the same. Notice the URL is the same. Uh, notice that the, the, the get is API user, right? The get is also API user, and this one is also API user. That's also part of the RESTful uh, uh, API uh, convention, right? This, this, uh, this over here uh, is an identifier of the, the data type or the um, uh, entity type or class type of something that you're interacting with. It, it uniquely identifies the, 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 the type of object that we're interacting with, okay? Um, and uh, we'll, 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 uh, I'll explain a couple more things. For instance, also the, the, AP, the, uh, the, the, the convention says that if, this, if there are entities that are related with one another, right, we, we, um, you know, we use the, uh, the, the uh, uh, path, right, separators, right, to denote the relationship between the different entities. And we already looked at that when we were rendering these things on the template, right? right. So, so we'll revisit that and, and see how it's implemented here for the RESTful APIs. Right now, we're saying uh, put a, 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 a API user, and then uh, if, uh, if, uh, if, the, if these APIs like this, is, is, is the interpretation is that, is that you're talking about the entire set of users, okay? But if you specify a, a particular ID, like user ID, then it must mean that you're talking about that one particular instance that you're talking about, right? And what do we want to do? Um, we want to update uh, that user, right? That particular user that already exists, right? In the collection of users. Uh, and, uh, and now um, we're going to pass also the data, right? We're going to uh, pass the information about the user, right? The new, the new first name, last name, uh, email, whatever, uh, address, phone numbers, uh, they're all going to be encoded as this object that we're going to pass along in the body, right? In the in the body is going to include an adjacent object that needs to be parsed back on the from from the body on the server side. Okay, uh, so let's do this. Let's um, let's uh, refresh. Uh, so if I clear this, right, and I I type this and I say okay, notice that we are generating a put, 
API user and then the ID of that user. And if we look at the at the um, the, the the transport, the payload, right? Notice that we are sending the data across uh, to the server, right, in, as part of the body, right? Uh, uh, so on the server side, I need to be able to extract this from from, from the body, right? And that's why we had installed the body parser module uh, early on, uh, which should be should be declared in the server server JS. There it is. Indeed, it is it is installed. Yes, we are using that. Because out of the box, Node.js doesn't know how to parse things from the body. Right? That's why we're using this uh, body parser uh, Node.js uh, um, module, uh, which is installed and declared as well in the package JSON as a dependency. So don't, rem don't forget to put, the, put it as a dependency right? so that when you deploy it uh, on your remote server, right, it knows to install that dependency. Okay? Um, all right, so we have it installed. It knows how to, how, how to parse JSON. Uh, so we just on the server side notice that we don't have anything mapped to that URL. So we have we get a 404, right? So let's go back to the uh, web service on the server side, okay? And let's map a put. Let's map a put, okay? There it is, a put that is going to uh, receive API user and the user ID, and this is going to be update user, all right? implemented in a function of the same name. Okay, so function uh, update user, again request response and is going to uh, use the the same logic that we had in the client. I'm going to just move it over. Right, I had commented out, but I'm just going to copy it and paste it here and uncomment it. So what's this use doing? It's going to uh, uh, is going to look for in the users array a user that matches with the user ID. Where is the user ID? Is part of the parameter. So we need to extract it from the parameter here, var user ID from request params uh, user ID. Okay, uh, and we're going to find uh, the user. We're going to update the first name, last name, whatnot, right? And then we're going to respond to the server. To we're going to respond. With a uh, with JSON, right? That user we're going to send back, uh, and we're going to return, okay, or break, right? We don't want to we don't want to continue iterating. Re response JSON does not stop the execution on the server, so you have to explicitly break out or return. Right, so let's. Uh, well, in this case, since uh, the IDs are unique. Right, it'll only respond one, right? But say it match several, it's going to respond many times, or going to try and respond many times, right? Uh, for each one that matches, right? Uh, what's actually going to happen is that the server is going to complain and say, no, 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 you already responded. You cannot respond once you have committed a response, right? Uh, typically, a request comes in from the client. Uh, it can be shared among several uh, um, uh, functions that that are that might be changed together. And then they all participate in generating a response that goes back to the cloud, but it's only one and one, right? You cannot have several responses for one request, right? So there's only one response. So it would fail if you had more than one. In this case, it would not fail since there's a unique ID, right? It only happened once, right? But I want to make sure that I explicitly know, know that uh, I don't want to continue the, the loop, okay? It just returns from update user. It does, just goes back to the server. Right, it doesn't actually do anything. Okay, uh, let's uh, let's uh, go back. Uh, the client. Let's see. The client should return return this right on the controller. The controller uh, here. I'm gonna get a promise right. So I don't want this. So I'm gonna say uh, this would say var use a promise or I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna write it like this. So this whole thing is going to return the promise, right? This, this function returns a promise object which has a success function on it. Right? So I'm calling the success function on the promise that comes back from this update user. And I'm declaring a function here which is going to have the user, the new user. Okay. And uh, and the logic is now going to live in here. If user is null, 
user successful, blah, blah, blah. If not, update was successful. All right. Uh, so let's see. Let's uh, refresh. Let's, okay, I got the, uh, the user. Let's go Marley. And so I update Marley and I say OK. I say OK. It still says internal server error. Oh my goodness. Let's see what happened on the server. So the server is saying that new user is not defined. Uh, right, the, the new user is, uh, we're, we pass in the body, we need to extract it from the body in the server side, right? So let's do that. So var new user is in the body of the request body. Let me start the server. There's Bob, so Bobby, say okay. 